word theodicy, which is a bit of a technical term, has more than one meaning. But the way it's used in English today, it means the question of how can a good God create a world in which there is evil? That's the question he's asking. And he says, how does Islam answer this question? It's one of the most remarkable uh, facts of religious history is that many people in the West have turned against religion and against God and against Christianity because they could not solve this problem. Now, outside of the Western world, I do not know a single non-Westerner who has left religion because of this question. It's a very interesting fact. Not only Muslims, but Hindus, Buddhists, Shintoists, Confucians, anybody, and Oriental Jews. Uh, the reason that this problem has come about like this and has caused such a furor in Western Christianity and has caused so many people to turn away from religion is that they do not want to understand that the world is not God. They do not want to understand that the world is not God. There is the metaphysics behind it, is that the world is created. Creation implies separation from God, and only God is good. And therefore, the separation implies distance from goodness, which is really the root of evil. And Islamic thinkers have written some very, very profound pages, especially Ibn Arabi, but many others, Rumi, others have the great Sufi writers especially, and also certain theologians like Azali, who was both a Sufi and a theologian, about this issue. That is, this, why should this be a problem? That is, if God is absolute goodness, nothing else can be pure goodness, because nothing else can be God. So the question that people should be asking is, why did God create the world? That's the real question. Not why is there evil in the world? The world is always the world. You know, the famous Arabic say, dunya, ad dunya. That is, the world is the world. And you do not expect perfection in the world because the world is not God. The more profound question I said is, why did God create the world? And Islam has an answer for that. Uh, for many Christian theologians said this was a mystery, or uh, God loved the world, so created the world and gave it his only son, as the New Testament says. Uh, for Islam, it is the famous hadith uh, that is God wanted to be known. And so he would create the world so that he would be known. In a sense, the world is a self-manifestation, a self-disclosure of God. This is the title of one of the wonderful books of William Chittick written recently, The Self-Disclosure of God, in which the world is God's own self-disclosure. And God needs, quotes and quotes, disclosure because he's infinite. And the divine infinitude must include the possibility of manifestation, of creation, of khalq, of self-disclosure. And therein writes, lies the root of, a, of the understanding of why there is the world. Islamic thinkers and ordinary people were never disturbed by this problem religiously. There's no taxi driver in Cairo who has to drive 16 hours a day and is very poor, has to feed 12 people, his sister and sister-in-law and grandmother and aunt, they're all sitting home waiting for him to bring the bread. To say, oh, what a horrible world, there's so much injustice in the world, not to talk about what the governments do to them, and therefore there's no God. That's what's important to understand, that this question never challenged their belief in either the goodness of God or in the almighty power of God.